the boreal forest. The largest forest biome on planet Earth represents over a quarter of the forest on the globe. In Quebec, the balsam fir, white birch forest region, also called the boreal mixed wood forest, spreads over 140,000 square kilometers in the southern part of the boreal forest. This forest is composed of conifers, balsam fir, white and black spruce, jack pine, eastern larch, and white cedar. Broad-leaved species, trembling aspen, balsam poplar, and white or paper birch also make up the forest. Over thousands of years, the plants, animals, and other organisms that make up the biodiversity of the boreal forest have adapted to the natural disturbances that have repeatedly occurred in the ecosystem. Wildfires and insect epidemics, notably of spruce, budworm, and forest tent caterpillar, have shaped the landscape and driven forest dynamics. Situated in the regional municipal county of Abitibi West, the Lake du Parquet Research and Teaching Forest, the French acronym is FELD, is a good example of the boreal mixed wood forest of Eastern Canada. I first came in the area uh, during my uh, doctoral studies. Uh, I was interested to uh, ecological land classification, which was something uh, popular at that, at that time. And uh, what we wanted to do is to uh, link the, the forest cover with the permanent feature of the landscape, such as the surficial deposit, and uh, the drainage uh, to, in order to better understand uh, the different type of uh, forest communities. Uh, we pick up the Ebekur and uh, Rockmar uh, township because they, they were uh, quite a lot of natural forests. Uh, the area was not under uh, uh, harvesting or uh, it has not been settled for, uh, uh, for agriculture. Yeah, the main reason for the creation of the Lake du Parquet Research and Teaching Forest, it's, it was because for a long period, uh, we had set up experiment, uh, trial uh, in the area, and we wanted to protect the, uh, uh, the area in such a way we can continue and make a follow-up of the research. But also we wanted to uh, have this forest uh, to be closer to our partner, governmental and industrial partner, uh, who are doing the forest management in the area. So in having the forest, it was possible for us to better know what were the uh, main issue in forest management that uh, our partner were facing. And uh, it's the reason why we, uh, we set up a conservation zone where we can follow the natural dynamics of the forest and the, uh, the management zone where we can experiment an uh, innovative uh, approach in uh, forest management. During the 1980s and 90s, the number of researchers and students working in the forest increased substantially, as did the focus of their studies. Certain research projects were undertaken within a year or two, whereas other studies and field experiments have been established and monitored over much longer periods. In 1993, Yukat and Yukam jointly submitted a proposal to create the Lake du Parquet Research and Teaching Forest to the Ministry of Natural Resources. The project required two forest companies, Tembeck and Norboard, to give up their cutting rights to the area. In 1995, a ministerial order was signed to allow the creation of the research and teaching forest, and in September of that year, the field was inaugurated. The Lake du Parquet Research and Teaching Forest is considered a special place for research, field experiments, training and demonstration activities in ecology and forest science. Some of the research undertaken in the forest is focused on gaining a better basic understanding of how forest ecosystem function. For example, the effect of climate on tree growth and reproduction, the effect of forest age and composition on soil processes and on biodiversity. Applied silvicultural research is also an important activity at the field and a number of field trials, particularly 
in partial cutting and experimental plantation. Yeah, the, the, the most interesting aspect of the, of the forest is probably these long chrono sequence that we have where we can reconstruct a, a long period post-fire succession in the area with uh, a very old fire that uh, occurred in 1717 to more recent fire in 1944. So it, uh, it, it was uh, useful for us because we were able to reconstruct the natural uh, evolution or succession of the, of the forest and use that to better manage the forest or to uh, uh, to help uh, Forrester to, in such way, uh, emulate the natural disturbance. On average, between seven and 8,000 tons of wood is harvested every year in the research and teaching forest. This is done by clear-cutting and partial-cutting about 60 to 70 hectares of forest. Around 60,000 trees are planted annually and other silvicultural treatments, such as site preparation, Pre-commercial thinning and tree pruning are practiced every year. Field trials of new silvicultural practices, such as partial cutting and variable retention harvesting, are undertaken in the management zone. It's also in this zone where intensive silviculture practices, including mixed plantations and hybrid poplar trials, are the subject of applied studies. So here we are in the intensive management part of the forest. And so we are studying ways to cultivate the forest so that the trees grow as fast as possible. Certain large scale research projects, such as the cavity nesting network, are undertaken in both the conservation and management zones of the field, as well as the neighboring forest. This long term project is part of an on ongoing study on birds and mammals that use decaying and dead wood in boreal forest. The study of the ecological interactions between trees, uh, species that excavate holes, and non-excavating species is an important knowledge to acquire in order to maintain the wildlife in managed boreal forest. The research station of the Lake du Parquet Forest was built and inaugurated in 2005, 10 years after the creation of the research and teaching forest. These infrastructures are essential to the ongoing research in the forest, but also for accommodating researchers from UQAT and UQAM and other research organizations. The research station houses a modern dendroecology laboratory for tree ring study and a paleoecology laboratory added in 2010 in the second construction phase of the station. Most of the tree and sediment samples that are analyzed in these labs come from studies undertaken well outside the field and even from outside of Quebec. Other laboratories are used primarily to facilitate pretreatment of samples, whether of vegetation, soil, insects, or other organisms, in preparation for more specialized analysis in the laboratories of the concerned researchers. Including the Desjardins Pavilion, added in the second construction phase, the research station can accommodate about 40 people. Moreover, with easy access to natural and managed forests in the field experiments, the station is an excellent venue for training and teaching, and several courses are given here each year. Other activities are organized almost every year at the research station. These include technical transfer and scientific meetings, and even, on occasion, school group visits. Management of the research and teaching forest is overseen by a committee composed of representatives of UQAT, UQAM, TEMBEC, NORBOARD, and the Ministry Responsible for Forests. As part of Quebec's public forest, the Lake du Parquet Research and Teaching Forest is open and accessible to the public. Several cottages and about 30 hunting camps are located within the forest. 
In order to motivate recreational use of the area, the Osprey Interpretation Trail leaving from the research station and the Hebiko Hills hiking trails with their panoramic views of the surrounding landscape are maintained in the forest. The research and teaching forest is an example, among others, of what is referred to as forêt de proximité, which could be loosely translated as proximate forests or forests close to communities. Le concept de forêt de proximité permet concrètement de prendre en charge et d'aménager le territoire et ses ressources de façon concertée. C'est une approche qui vise à favoriser l'occupation, la vitalité et le développement durable d'un territoire. Nous considérons la forêt d'enseignement et de recherche du lac du Parquet comme un outil, un partenaire pour les futures forêts de proximité. La forêt, sa culture et son aménagement sont l'essence même de notre territoire. L'expertise et les connaissances issues de cette forêt font rayonner la MRC d'Abitibi West et ce, à travers le monde. Nous sommes fiers d'être partenaires et de soutenir la forêt d'enseignement et de recherche du lac du Parquet. The future of the boreal forest will depend, in part, on our capacity to anticipate future changes that will affect its growth and health. The studies undertaken at the Lake du Parquet Forest and its research station aim to better understand the functions and processes driving the forest ecosystem and to test new approaches to managing these ecosystems. Ultimately, our improved understanding is contributing to the development of the forest management practices that can be adapted to changes in climate and other environmental stresses, and this while maintaining the natural biodiversity and ecosystem services provided by the forest. <laughs>